Previously, on the Horde of the Dragon Queen. The north of Faerun finds itself embroiled in chaos, as the long benign cult of the dragon has recently made a resurgence and is actively pillaging nearby lands at the behest of Seven Sajarin, who has attempted to gather five dragon masks to release Tiamat from her prison in the Nine Hells. Meanwhile, four novice adventurers journey to the town of Greennest as caravan guards for the belligerent Nub Magrub. During said journey, they came to know Nub's bodyguard, Sebastian Crenshaw, and the reserved Marlow Duskwood, who did their best to make the group feel welcome, despite Nub's foul temperament and overt self-interest. When the party reached their destination, they were greeted by the sight of a blue dragon that circled ominously over the town. Sensing the plight below, the party ventured further in, and soon encountered a young boy by the name of John Jameson. The troubled youth besieged Arthur and company to assist in the rescue of his family at a nearby house. However, when the party arrived, they soon encountered serious complications, as five malicious Korean laid in wait to ambush our heroes, although Arthur shot first. A vicious battle of attrition broke out, as the party and the Korean struggled against each other, but neither side initially gave the other any quarter. However, Dalaman evened the odds, as his magic incapacitated a number of the ravenous beasts, the party then dispatched their foes and successfully rescued the boy's family. The Grateful Father then informed the party of a secret passage into the keep. The group managed to force their way into an old tunnel and trudged down the narrow passageway, but found that they could not open the hatch at the other side, despite Zark's best efforts. Fortunately, some guards quickly discovered the party and brought them before Governor Nighthill, whose suspicions were quelled upon seeing the Jamesons. After introductions were made, the Governor enlisted the aid of our heroes to capture a prisoner for information and to rescue nearby civilians. And now we return as the tyranny of dragons continues. Apologies for that, I didn't realise that we didn't have any audio, so thank you, Pema, for pointing that out. Uh, quickly, yeah, sorry, sorry guys, <laughs> really sorry, that was, uh, uh, yeah, that was a little bit unprofessional of me. Never mind, um, I'll probably have to overdub uh, the opening, uh, and I'll probably just cut to this point in the actual VOD. So uh, basically all that's happened so far is we've backtracked to the, thank you, sorry, uh, back to the keep, and... Ma uh, Night Hill's just handed a map over to Arthur and he's gotten a shield from the uh, from the army and uh, little John Jameson has just come out of the infirmary and he is looking in the general direction of Marlow and Gwen. Um, you can see uh, Gwen as John comes out, he starts running up and approaches you specifically and he holds out two bottles with some red liquid inside and kind of holds them up to you to take. I will crouch down and ask him, what do you have there, boy? Oh, well, uh, the nice uh, plant lady said that these might be helpful to you. Um, I, She said that they weren't for free. I had to give her uh, my pocket money out of... A pocket, but I wanted you to have these. Uh, you help save my mummy and daddy, and I. And he he, get, he kind of like um, just ho like gives you a hug around your legs. And he just says, "Thank you for helping me." That is very sweet of you, Johnny. So. I will take the bottle. Um, yeah, as he passes, he does give uh, Marlo the stink eye and just says when I was in danger why didn't you help me the, the nice lady was distracted but you just ignored me uh, Marlo says oh I'm I'm really sorry I I, I didn't realize there was a lot going on and uh, the uh, John walks away before he can finish his explanation so well, I was looking a little bit dejected at that, but uh, never mind. What can you do? <laughs> I'll, I'll I'll sort of watch this interaction and watch him go like, I helped him too. What? Fine, fine. 
What did he give you? I swear it's a one. Okay. Uh, I'm guessing this is some minor healing? They've actually just two regular healing potions. Hmm. Get a lot of pocket money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, I mean, you'll have to ask Sasha about it later to see exactly what happened, well, but that's just his she story. She might have given him a discount. Yeah. He might have stolen. Hey, you, like I said, you'll have to follow up later. I'm on to you, DM. I'm, I'm on going to, you. to talk to Sasha at some point anyway. Uh, but we have other pre more pressing issues. Yeah, that, that's absolutely fine. So um, before we move on to the old tunnel does anyone want to do anything else here at the keep there's one little thing i'd like to do before going anywhere is i want to root through the satchel that i took from one of the kareem uh yeah absolutely uh, oh. did we recover any of our various slots in the last no session? you guys haven't had the opportunity to do a long rest okay. short. i mean i don't even know if you've had a short rest actually no because no. basically you were restored to four by consuming potions that Sasha gave you. So in terms of spell slots, you guys are as you were. Fair enough. Okay, so uh, what did you say? Oh, so you rolled a 13 on your investigation? Okay. Um, so on a 13, I would say that you root through the Kareen's uh, satchel. There isn't really much in there, but you do see another scrap of paper. And it has um, a language, a scrolled on it. This doesn't look. I, I don't. Have you actually seen any of these up close yourself, Arthur? Or is Delaman the only one who's looted these so far? Um, I, I think Delaman might be the only one, or I might have handed one to him, possibly. Um, okay. But I didn't really look at it either way. Okay, so despite not understanding the contents, you can tell that this has been quite crudely drawn. Mm -hmm. But it's in a language that you don't recognize. A Delamun. Hmm? Is uh, this like the uh, other ones you had? No, take it. And I'll, I'll try and read it. Okay. Um, it's in Draconic, so um, you can tell what it says. So, the note simply says, um, Do what they say for now, but remember why we're really here. That's well, all yes. it says. This is in the dragon tongue. What does it say? Look like writing to Zark. Not tongue. The translation is oh, not the best. Do what they say for now, but remember why we are here. Does this mean anything to you? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah, there's literally nothing else. Oh no, it's pretty succinct. Uh, thanks. Oh, of course. Okay, uh, anything else you guys would like to do here? No, I think so. I'm done. Okay, um, so bef as you leave, um, Night Hill will just um, step forward to um, send you guys off, so we just say, Remember, the lives of the civilians are of the utmost priority. If you can recover anything else, I would be personally very grateful. Uh, Arthur, when did you want that distraction again? Give us about five minutes, then do it. I hail nods. And he just motions back to his original position. Okay, so you guys uh, can feel free to move on anytime you like. Oh, well, Bug, before we do continue, you've got as the section you have for the roll screen as your settings. Oh, my apologies. It's because I'm on a different <laughs> screen. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's because of. Is he, like, before he leaves us, I'd like to say we will do what we can for the people. Saving the Jamesons, I can tell that you are all a good sort. So I wish you the best of luck and good hunting. Happy hunting. With that, I'll start to go off back to the way we came in. 
Okay. Can I, before we leave, can I take one last look up at the, up at the sky? At yes, the you dragon, can. See what it's doing. The dragon, as it was before, is just circling overhead. It has not broken its formation the entire time you've been here. Although, Delman, make an intelligence mm. check. Okay, on a 16, I would say you can't really place your finger on it, but all of you have kind of, like, I'm kind of speaking generally, that since you've been here, all of you have felt a general unease. You kind of, like, Delman, up till now, you've kind of chalked it just down to the urgency of the situation, but upon searching your feelings closer, you feel that you this is, it isn't quite natural. It's, there's something in the background creating this pressure, and I think you had an intelligence all last session that sort of like, you could kind of like, Night Hill described um, frightful presence, basically, so it doesn't really seem to be affecting you guys, but it just, there's this really passive tension in the atmosphere around here. So, Have you noticed that on the faces of like the guards and stuff? The guards seem um, Night Hill, I believe, mentioned that this has been going on for about five hours, the attack. So, as you've been talking to, you haven't really talked to any of the guards specifically. You've only talked to Castilian and Night Hill specifically, haven't you? Um. If you kind, do you want to just make a perception check to see if you kind of can get a feel? Okay. Uh, once again, you can tell that the guards look beleaguered, but that just based on what you were told, they seem to have somewhat acclimatized to it, but it's very much the same as you guys. They've probably felt the effects of this frightful presence a lot more directly than you because when the attack started, they may have tried to fight back. But I think it's it's difficult to tell whether it's tension from whatever the dragon is exuding or whether it's just tension from the the pressure of the situation. But that's about as much as you're able to discern. Zark, no like big blue lizard. Nor should you. It's a very dangerous foe, much beyond you. Do not take oh, much Come food. on, Zark. Let's go do what we can today. Let's not look at the sky. If we look at what is in front of us, we can focus on what we need to do right now. Okay. So, uh, you guys hang out. Yeah, heading out. So, whilst we're in the tunnel, uh, going back through, I'd like to just look back to everyone. So, which one are we doing? Are we going to go for the mill or are we going to go for the temple? Um, just, do you want me to bring up the map so you guys can actually see where those are in relation to each other? Oh uh, yeah, given I have the map now, yeah. Be nice, yeah. Yeah, that's partially why I gave it to you, just so you could actually I mean, we, we had overview. all seen the map before, yeah. so um, that's some idea. Just to clarify, by the way, I'm just going to use um, Arthur's token to represent the party. Um, all of you guys have control of it if you want to drag it around, it's just so we're not moving too many things around. Oh, actually, Gwen's under there. Whoops. I... Sorry, what are, you, what are you doing under me? <laughs> well, we're all okay. there, no. you, you... Sorry, I, I've deleted you. Okay, so... Oh. Well, right, so the old tunnel exit is over here, mm. by the way. Okay. No, Temple really have many... Right. Okay, men. so the mill is over this way, and the temple is over in this direction. So, mm. up to you guys what you'd like to do first. Temple so, full of holy men. What so, is... maybe they heal others. The temple seems the most likely place for refuge beyond the keep. If we went to the mill first, we could just draw that, trouble there. That house on the top left. Uh, what did you say, Sai? On the top left on the map. That looks like some kind of estate. Yeah, exactly that one. Uh, this one. Top left. No, that the yeah the the very top left. The oh, are you talking about this? Uh, uh, do you want to just paint it on the map? Actually, I might be. Oh, you're looking up there. Um, 
There's nothing in particular about that. That the area over there is just a residential district, as far as you guys know. Um, the individual buildings aside, the sort of aside from the ones that've got numbers beside it, there's nothing with any additional detail. It does look like a, an estate that might also be able to haul up. Yeah, That's potentially. Yeah, uh, Night Hill only marked. Um, and these two locations specifically on the map are basically the old tunnel exit, the keep, the temple, and uh, the mill. Those are the main landmarks of the town. You mentioned the temple being the most likely to be defendable. Mm -hmm. And it is further away from us. We are closer to the mill right now. My only worry is that if we go to the mill, we'll be attracting attention there. The mill is closer to town. Isn't it likely to already have attention? Mm -hmm. I look so to the others. A temple. And down to Delamon. Hmm. The temple would both be the safest place and yet the place most likely for to be attacked people like to sully guards when they raid towns hmm. it is a tough call temple of magic men magic men cure well, not necessarily they may have some healing that is true it's a tougher journey but potentially more rewarding I look to your judgment. You have military experience, you do you not? Speaking to Arthur. Yes. You are right. The temple is most likely to hold people to defend from, but it's also most likely to be attacked. Okay. It wouldn't hurt to scout out the mill though, whilst we're next to it. To Gwen. Agreed. Maybe we can stay in the tree line. Agreed. Walk in the Based on the map, there's a wall around it, so we can use that to hide behind and scout it out. Okay. As you guys are talking, you start to hear some movement from over in this direction here. What um, do you What do you guys do in response? Uh, can I see anything? Um, I'd probably say that to get these um bushes here are fairly high, so you'd probably have to move into them and uh, peer through them if you wanted to get a closer look at what's going on. And there's a river between us and those bushes, right? It isn't very deep, though. You could just uh, walk through it fairly effortlessly. My hand goes to one of my hand axes. So, as I say, you're coming from this direction here, so do you guys move closer? I say moved into the woods. That will lead us both towards the mill and the sound we're hearing. Okay. Stay on the side of the river. And try to, yeah, exactly there. Try to sell. Uh, okay. I'd probably say that it thins out towards this end. So I would say, for convenience sake, that you can see past this. So I'm actually going to switch the map over in that case to uh, da, 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 da. over here. Okay. So um, uh, you guys just reposition your tokens. I just. Uh, Put you there for convenience sake. Right. Okay, so as you guys move over to this location, you can hear uh, the clank of a few makeshift wagons being flanked by the following units. Um, I haven't actually put the wagon on the map, uh, just assume that um, you can tell from here that the three wagons contain some people and also some boxes. It's kind of one of those wagons where there's like bars inside. It looks like this isn't from Greenest. It looks to be quite cruelly made. Around the wagon, you can see three individuals with headdresses and the wagon is being driven by two guards in um, beige armor with two rep and being pulled by two reptilian creatures whom you have not seen previously. 
And at the front of this convoy is a rather tall reptilian creature with blue skin adorned with a purple robe and an eight foot lizard with um just trying to remember what skin again yeah i'm going to say that he's got red skin from memory coat partially in armor but also with a rather unusually designed pauldron it kind of sticks out from the rest of his aesthetic and as they pass you can hear an argument ensuing with these two creatures at the front. They're speaking rather loudly, so I'd say that you would be able to hear them from this distance. Do you guys do anything so far, or do you wait and listen? Do we definitely know there are people in the... What was that saying? Do we definitely know there's people in the wagons? Yeah. Can, um, can we see anything about those people? Like, can we see, are they likely civilians, or are yes. they likely troops? Civilians, definitely civilians. Do I recognize the type of robe? Um, what it means? The robe of the... Of, like, the blue uh, one? Blue one, yes. Well, intelligence. Could I have advantage, given that it's a, a Korean? This isn't. I will oh, tell you that much. Okay. Nah, you search your memory for a moment, and you think that it might be something related to the Korean, but then you think... No, this this isn't typical for them. This is something else entirely, but you can't quite place your finger on where you may have seen this before. So, um, do you guys do anything else? I remain quiet in that case. Okay, so from the distance, you hear um, the large lizard say to the other one, Why the long face, Slectrosa? Uh, the other one, the blue one, says, As I've said before, we're not here to take prisoners. These gnats are of no value. The lizard says, We've gravid trinkets, as is your want. The blue one motions over, ge just generally to your side of the river, and just says, There are likely drakes nearby we could use to get this done quickly. This convoy draws too much attention. The other one goes, Lady Resmere placed me in charge. Or have you forgotten how furious she was when the goods went missing just outside this dirty fumper town? The blue one scowls. Your scouting party hasn't returned yet, and the support unit were absent as we passed. Not that I'm surprised. The lizard then goes, Watch your tongue, Dragonborn! Unlike you, my forces have lost nothing! The blue one says, At least my men can remain focused, lizard. And look at these! I mentioned motioning to the prisoners, whelps in the eye as we pillage. I don't know why you insisted on bringing them. And then the lizard goes, Enough! Okay, and at this point, um, you guys notice from the from the for kit next to you here, uh, just give me a moment to reveal them. Um, I would say, just for convenience sake, that they're a little bit further over to this way. You feel some uh, movement through the thicket to your left-hand side as eight kobolds on ambush drakes approach um, sort of the party over here, interrupting the argument. And you can't really hear what the kobolds are saying to these two, but... Uh, the large lizard seems to be getting quite agitated, and he just turns to um, this uh, other one here and says, It would seem that we have uninvited guests in our midst. <sighs> Mondaf wants us to report back. The blue lizard goes, Hmm. We haven't really got much treasure here, so I suppose that these imbeciles would be able to complete the job without us. Hmm. Uh, the lizard goes, we are not losing these prisoners. The lizard goes over to one of the guards and he hands him a horn and says, if anything goes amiss, you use that immediately. And he, pointing to the blue lizard, will come back 
and make sure that this convoy gets out here safely. Uh, let's be going. Okay. And with that, um, these two, along with the ambush drakes, start moving off in this uh, general direction. It probably takes them um, uh, a couple of minutes. They're not really moving with any great haste, but uh, I'm just going to put them over here for the time being. So as the two leave, you can see that the caravan don't really know what to do. They weren't really expecting this party to be broken up. So you can see that the three cultists, or well, you soon to be cultists, I suppose, um, just kind of start bickering amongst themselves as to where we're going to be going. And the two guards just kind of... I mean, you can't actually see their expression because they're wearing full armor, but they kind of just seem exasperated and they go stepping off to the side to have their own conversation. So for the moment, the convoy isn't going anywhere. So what do you guys do it's now? This oh. to scale. It is. I'll Which? turn to Arthur. What is the plan? This was, one, this was not a part of call, but it is an opportunity. You... Sleep Sleep guard who has pod? There are civilians here. This is what we were asked to do. Help the civilians. Precisely. Oh, Adelman, can you do anything about the horn? Oh, I have a few tricks up my sleeve. Yes. I ready my crossbow, have a bolt loaded in swift, and I have it aimed at the one that's holding the horn as well, just in case. Okay. I'm ready when you are. Um, could you ping the one that's holding the horn? Okay. Is the that one there in the middle? I think. Um, yeah, it's uh, the one on the left. Okay, it was the right yeah. one of the cultists. Oh, it was them you gave it to. Mhm. Mm one of them. Right, the cultists. It, the guards were near us, so I just said I gave it to them. Okay. Once, we, if we take <laughs> care of the guards, the others may come to investigate. What is the plan? Their insights. Distraction or engagement? Does anyone have a way to pull them up into the bushes? I look towards Gwen and Zark. I can hold them maybe for a little bit. Zark, so hit them good. I say, point into my axe. Not for long, though. I smile at Zark soon. Gwen, can you see if you can lure them into the bushes out of sight of the others? Then we sleep them. So, distraction. Distraction rock. <laughs> do, we have, do we have that? <laughs> Not yet. Yeah, Unfortunately. Exactly. <laughs> Let me think of that. Uh, I wish we did. Oh, I should have asked when I was there. Ah, oh, damn it. I could... Can I see any distraction rocks on the riverbed? I may have a way to draw them near. Actually, I think the non-magical simple means of making some noise in the bushes might be the way. I'll nod. Zark hit tree good? And we say, hit the mask people good. His mask is in there. Is it already Dragonborn? I can't tell. No, no, they're just snap some, snap some twigs. These guys? Yeah, yeah. It's sound like there's someone in the woods, Zark. We just want them to look, but not be alarmed. That's our gesture further down around about there-ish. Zark Splash stream good. Wait, wait. They're um, gathering. They're rounding up people. Um, just they to say, more prizes. As you guys are talking, the guards are starting to walk back towards the caravan. Here goes. I'll cast minor illusion. Round the area between Gwen and Zark, and make it sound as if there are people 
uh, I want to make it sound as if there are people that are perhaps hidden from the guards. Okay. And are sounding frightened. Okay. Um, could you just put Minor Illusion into the chat for me just to see what the spell save DC is? This, um... uh, it's intelligence. Oh. Intelligence, okay. And my save is 12. Right, so these. So I'd probably say that the it's the guards in range who you want to do this to. So um, let me just see what the intelligence is. So. Oops. Oh, for some reason I do not have them open. Uh, just excuse me one moment. I have that. Yeah, literally the only thing that I don't have open, of course. <laughs> of course it is. Right, okay, so the intelligence is, yeah, plus zero. I'll try and make it sound like, come on, quick, we have to get out of here, the guards, they're still close. Uh, how loud is this? Is it kind of like a muffle, is it kind of like supposed to be hushed? It's hushed tones enough oh, he's that dying it... I'm snapping twigs like okay yeah. walking not he... quiet in the trees yeah it, it's hushed tones enough that they yeah I'd say would hear, but it's not... yeah given the distance that they're at, I'd say that's okay so um let me just roll for both guards so first one fails yeah second one fails god those fellas fell on form tonight okay so the guards as they start to turn away notice the sound and they one seems to motion to the other to have the horn ready and starts uh, motioning gingerly towards your position. So whereabouts did you cast it? Was it on Gwen's position? Um, I'd say... Yeah, I can't ping, hang on. Yeah. That round about there in between Sark and Gwen. Okay, so over the next 20 seconds they start moving towards this direction. Do you guys... I'll turn, I'll turn back to Arthur and... Um... Marlo. Okay, so whenabouts do you do that? So at what point when you get to just here? as the just the, right after I do it, I'll turn back to him and say, "This spell may not work. Have your bows at the ready to take them out." Okay, they, they're, they're, they're still moving forward as you're saying this, by the way. Right, as they get to position, I want to cast sleep on them. It has a range of ninety feet, so it should well within range. Yep. If I hit them right. Uh, yep, I would say that that should work nicely, so uh, go ahead and make that roll. Uh, it is... make sure... He has five slots left. He probably have three. I've got one plus sorcery points, so two. Yeah. It's five to eight. Shame we don't have your maths and magic yet. Right. 25 hit points worth. Oh. Okay, so... As they approach, one sees one of the guards just starts shaking on his feet. The other one looks befuddled for a moment, and then he does likewise. Um, they then just both fall over on their sides, and one of them drops a horn. So they're now both on the floor, unconscious. Have these trying noticed anything? And try to, like, still trying to keep quiet. Yeah. And he dropped the horn on the floor, right? He's no longer holding it. No longer holding it. And in answer to your question, to th these up. three are still bickering amongst themselves. So, no, they're not really paying any attention. I've got my crossbow train on this one. Just waiting for opportunities to fire, basically, when everyone else is ready. Okay. So, did anyone say anything else? Sorry, I might have missed that. Since the horn is lying on the ground, I'm going to pick it up. Okay. I'm just putting it in my pack or just... Fair play. It, like, I don't know, if it has a string attached to my belt, something like uh, no, it, Just keep it out of the way. Yeah, no, no string on it. It's literally just a horn. In that case, it's hmm. just in my pack or something. Just, perhaps we should I make don't this, have it in my hands. Perhaps we should make this unusable. Can I perhaps use my frostbite cantrip to sort of freeze it up so it can't be blown? We might want to use this horn outside. <laughs> I've got an icy hand ready. Hmm. Oh. You may be right, yes. Keep it safe. Okay. That's why I put it in my pack. Right. Um, he gets uh, another eye roll. Okay. <laughs> so, as you guys are talking, 
the three cultists are starting to finish their conversation. This one turns around to face the carriage, not you guys, and notices that the guards aren't back yet. And he's starting to look a little bit confused as to why that is, because they should have only been going on a two-minute pee break. And it's been at least five by now. While they're asleep, can I disarm them? Um, yeah, by all means. Whatever weapons they're holding, I want to I wanna grab them and just, just throw them away. Yeah. Okay, so um, as you're doing that, this... No. Uh, Given I've oh, noticed so that one of them has started to notice that things aren't quite right, I want to take that opportunity to fire my bolt at this one. Uh, which one? Uh, yep, you go right ahead and do that. I'd say okay. I'd say do it with advantage because they're not aware of you. Did that come through? Yeah. Right. The yeah. nat um, I Wait, haven't it come seen through for the you guys? I got a nat 20, anyway. <laughs> Nice. Okay, roll your damage. Okie dokie. Oh, it's automatically put the uh, additional damage on. Nice. Thank you, game. Okay, that came um, from... Uh, what? Wait, what? It says roll two dice, but it only rolled one. Um, just roll uh, another dice. Fuck's sake, game. At least be consistent. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's an additional d8. So that's 10 piercing damage to this guy. Okay. So, as this guy starts uh, motioning to the other two that something might be amiss, an arrow just goes right through the side of this one's head. And... Uh, yep. Do we notice this bolt was from our position? I mean, this guy has just got a bolt through the head out of nowhere and has fallen over dead. So, yes, I would say that the commotion that this is causing... Um, <laughs> You hear screaming coming from this direction because these civilians have just seen someone be killed right in front of them, essentially. Uh, the other two guys distracted at their fallen comrade? Um, or are they like, what was that noise? They're looking around now to see whether where that's come from. They can tell probably from the angle of the bolt that it might have come over from Arthur's direction. So they're just generally starting to look around there now. I want to throw one of my hand axes at this guy. Okay. Um, yeah, I would say that you get one more attack, but then I would say that they pretty much know where you are. Nope. That is a 17. Okay, let me just double check. Um, yep, 17 will hit. And that is 10 damage. Oh. Yeah. Okay. It was really itching to kill someone. So, as these two start climbing around seeing what's going on, um, Zark throws a hand axe and it just gashes this guy in the side. And he is also down. Okay. I'm guessing you're going to those, yep. Oh, sorry, gone. Those four figures below the two dead people, those are the civilians, or are those also... Uh, the four... Yeah, these four figures down here are the civilians. Okay, thanks. They're kind of, like, separated into three carriages. I just did it like this, just for ease of illustration. Okay, but I would say by now that this guard, as well as these two lizards have noticed you, so... This guard I was is. They were just mounts. What was that say? <laughs> said balls. I was hoping they were just mounts. Oh well. <laughs> so this guard, uh, before he does anything else, is going. To... Oops, Daisy didn't mean to get all of them. Was he is going to unhook the harness from these two guys? And now um, I would say that since Axe in the open, combat will begin. So let me just go ahead and roll Maybe initiative. Into it. Just uh, roll initiative. I'll, I'll take your roll. In fact, I'll take care of let me just take uh, these two guys off who are already dead. Okay. Turn order. I mean, I've got the initiative thing here anyway. So, there you go. I know. Yeah, I got nice again. So, let me just uh, get this open. Oops. Uh, so, we start with uh, Gwen, actually. 
going to do what I did the other times and use the cantrip produce flame and stir this right so let me check range it's 30 feet range so I should be able to yeah. hit the guy that mm -hmm. does the, the harness so yeah, that's, that's absolutely fine Okay. Sorry, um, no, count the first one. Count the first one, it, okay. It didn't look like it, it worked on my end. Uh, okay, so you produce flame and you toss it over. I'd say that this guy is aware enough at this point that he sidesteps it just in time, but you can see that the flame has singed the edges of his robes. Okay. And I'd like to move a little bit closer. Okay. I can still move, right? Yeah, of course you can. Uh, do you want me to just hold in place for you? Um, so you could you could move up to thirty feet if you wanted to. So yeah. I'd like to move away. Where yeah. I move. Somewhere. Okay. Uh, and with that, I'm done with my turn. Okay, you're done with your turn. It is now Zach's turn. I shall take out my axe. And charge in this direction and attack this lizard there. Okay, very good. Um, roll to hit it then. God, it skidded on my screen on the nat 20 and then just um, over to the 8. Nope, that unfortunately so is an 8. So you. You kind of go to swing at its legs, but it raises them in order to avoid the attack. And it just turns and looks at you rather sternly. I'll end my turn. Okay, now it's Arthur's turn. Okie dokie. Hmm. You know what? Might as well charge all the way in. So I sling my crossbow and I pull out my uh, mace. I charge forward all the way to there, and I'll make an attack against the cultist. Okay. That definitely hits. Seven bludgeoning damage. Okay. You go to swing at the cultist. He raises his arm to try and block the attack, and as you hit it, you can actually feel his like the bones in his arms shatter and he just cries out in a lot of pain almost crying in fact but this, they are still up for now okay i raise my shield and i get ready for the inevitable attack okay. and my turn okay it is now malo's turn so let me just uh, get this screen back up here so i can actually move him so uh, Marlo, seeing that he is potentially missing out on the fun yet again, is going to, um, he can move up to, yeah, I say he's going to move up to about 20 feet away. I wouldn't say, I'm not considering the river difficult terrain, just to clarify, or anything like that. So um, he's going to take a longbow shot at one of the giant lizards. Oh, for some reason, I've got uh, the character sheet open over this. Let me just switch over to Marlow. <laughs> yeah, that's derp on my part. Uh, okay. Right, so Nine does not hit. He shoots a longbow, and it somehow always goes in between the toes of the lizard. Lizard actually cocks its head slightly and thinks that was almost more impressive than hitting me. Good, good job, I guess. Okay. <laughs> It's an intelligent lizard. Hey, I mean, it's dealing with idiots, so. Um, I did put the guards on the turn order accidentally, but it's actually the cultist's uh, turn now, so. The oh, cult sent that comment. The cultist um, looks like he is about to pass out from the sheer amount of pain he's endured, but he groggily looks over to Arthur and. So uh, let's see what he would do here. Yeah, he's just going to uh, use his interaction to pull a scimitar off his belt, and he's going to swing in for an attack. 
They argue he has disadvantage. Um, Actually, he he's, using, anyway, but... he's using the other arm. It misses anyway. It doesn't really matter. I mean, I'm, yeah. I was, I'll say that like the pain of his other arm is really just throwing him off. So he kind of just lunges forward. But yeah, you're just a little bit too small for him right now. He doesn't, hey, have, I'm small. he doesn't have good depth perception, what can I say? Right, and uh, with that, it is Delman's turn. Okay. <clears throat> um, is the is the the wagon cage? I assume it's locked. Um, you can't really tell from here. You would probably have to get closer to look more closely. And I will do so. Okay. So, um, roll investigation if you'd like. 15. Okay. Uh, with the 15, you can see that on the back of uh, the wagon that you're looking at, sorry, caravan, whatever I'm calling this, um, is a very sort of cruelly done lock. I mean, for anyone with any real strength, you could probably break it fairly easily, but these are commoners and they look like they've been through the ringer. All of you, staying calm. We'll get you out of this. Yeah, they all just seem really frightened by the spectacle. They've just been um, cowering on the floor most of the time. You can kind of like hear the odd gasp as uh, people are being struck in combat, but mostly they're staying quiet. Okay, so I think I have five feet of movement left, so I move 20. Um, it's. Uh, movement speed's 25. Ah, right, okay, so yeah, five left. Can I sidestep back up to this space and uh, aim my sling at the cultist? Wait. Um, I would say that might be a bit of an odd angle. Like, basically imagine these civilians are occupying the space of the caravan. I'm not quite sure if you'd be shooting past Arthur if you were stood there. I'd say that if you were to kind of like stand on side of Arthur, you might be doing that disadvantage. Okay, for now then I'm just going to hold my position here and then move on. Okay. Uh, Giant Lazard number one's turn. And yeah. so this one is going to move around to go onto Zark's other side and it is going to make a bite attack against him. Does a 17 hit? Yes, yes it does. Okay. And it does a 1d8 piercing damage to you. You're not, you didn't specify you were raging when you started so you don't have your resistance right now, do you? I can't rage at the moment anyway. Oh yeah, because you already used it earlier. Mm. Fair enough. Uh, you know what, let me just quickly reset. Resistances. Ah, oh, it's reset anyway. Cool. Uh, so that was six damage. So yeah, it comes around and it just bites your arm. Seems to be a popular spot for these creatures. It's odd, really. So okay, he's very annoyed at this. Tries to rage at it, but he's just too tired. It, yeah, he's just. Yeah. He's a tired yeah. little baby right now. Mm. Okay, so let us move on to the second lizard's turn. Uh, the second lizard also doesn't like Zark very much, so it's going to follow the example of the first. Uh, 14, I assume, doesn't hit you. Uh, meets it, beats it. Meets it, beats it. Yeah. Oh, I thought your AC was higher than that, honestly. No. Okay, a further 7 damage to you. Ow. Right, so, oops. Big screen, I keep... Keep telling to the wrong thing. Okay. Right. It just bites in the same spot. It's really just trying to make that your right arm really, really sore. I'm very annoyed at this. It it has a little smile mm -hmm. on its face as it's doing that. Okay, and we're back up to Gwen. I am going to do the same thing again, but on the leather that's to the side of the arc. So, oh, be able to so this one here? Yeah, you can hit yep. it, no problem, I'd say, from there. Like, he isn't in the way, that's to the side. Uh, so no. I'm you high enough back. Yeah, I mean, he's also quite a big target, so I'd say that you're fine. Nice. 
19 hits. <sighs> what are these moves? <laughs> I'm not just saying this. I feel so sorry for you. I know exactly what this feels like. <sighs> <laughs> okay, so... Quite like uh, previously... He's a little bit tickled. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it kind of just like jitters slightly as it just feels like someone just kind of gave him a tummy rub. And yeah, I mean, to be honest, it hurts slightly, but kind of liked it. Strange. Did you do anything else? No, ending my turn. Okay. Uh, in, that, in that case, it is Zach's turn. I will attack the one that just got tickled with my axe. The one that... Ah. Assume that's the one that did the most damage anyway. Um, that, that was one. the one below you that did the most damage, but that was the first one to damage you. Yeah. Well, either way, this one's getting hit. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> does a 13 hit? Does a 13 hit? That is a good question. It does. Uh, roll your damage, please, sir. Ooh. Ooh. Nice hit. Nice. Okay, so Thank I'm you. going to say that as Gwen tickled the giant lizard, it kind of raised, it raised its belly for a few moments just because it was amused so much by it. And you take the opportunity to strike your great axe right in there. So it isn't really laughing cool. anymore, I would say. It now looks so much support. Yeah, yeah. It now <laughs> looks it looks very unhappy at Zark after that. <laughs> do you do anything else, do I ask? I I just shout in its face and my turn. Argh! I don't think Zark so can form the words at the moment to press how annoyed he is. That is reasonable. Yeah. And it's half his turn. Mm. I am going to swing at the cultist yet again with my mace. He has a pleading look in his eyes as you do that. And hit him. Yeah, you just break his arm completely. And yeah, I would just say the sheer shock of what just happened just causes him to fall Die. over. Yeah, basically. <laughs> yeah, seeing as Zark is in a bit of trouble taking some hits, and seeing as the civilians have nothing between them and the lizard, despite us, just the carriage, I'm going to move up to where the cultist was, standing over his body in between uh, the lizard and the people. Okay. And I am my turn there. Okay, very good. And it is now Marlo's turn. Okay. Uh, Marlo is going to go up beside Gwen, and he is going to attempt to strike at the blizzard to Zack's left, using Kier's longbow. That one. Mm -hmm. Okay, let me just uh, go back to here. Uh, unfortunately, Eleven does not hit. He... He does the same thing again. He shoots the arrow and it goes between the toe of its other foot. Again, it looks mildly impressed, but never mind. Um, as Mal as Malo's as Malo's bonus action, he is going to shout some profanities at the lizard to get its attention, which is the help action. So, Gwen, due to Marlow's distraction, you will get advantage on your next attack against that creature. Nice. Or just actually against mm -hmm. either of them. He's kind of like just shouting at both of them. What does he shout? He, to be honest, Marlow can't really think of stuff to say, so he just says something like, Oi! You look different! I mean, I think really just... Oh no, help it! <laughs> Marla looks slightly embarrassed. I would imagine that Gwen's just raising her eyebrow, just thinking, what are you doing <laughs> at this moment? But 
And also, the slightly confused look. On he, my face. That's reasonable. But it's it's not the eye roll and severely raised eyebrows Dalman gets. No, not quite. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, he hasn't done anything to earn that today. So um, Marlowe, just feeling slightly more socially awkward than normal, ends his turn, and now it's uh, Dalman's turn. All right, I can't get a good look at the battle from this angle, so I'm gonna use my movement to go around this side of the cage. Okay. And uh, I'm gonna cast Frostbite on the lizard that's in between Zach and Arthur. Um, that was a con save, wasn't it? Yes, DC 12. DC 12. Let me just see what this has got in con. Okay, this actually is plus one. Nice. Uh, so let's just uh, go it's ahead. It's gonna fail anyway. It's probably gonna fail anyway. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Watch this. I should be putting up. I'm just going to put on my sunglasses at this moment. <laughs> no, okay, so you just make it feel a little bit chilly. It's kind of just, it kind of just like. Um, shakes its body to shake off um, like some, a little bit of frost on it, but otherwise it's relatively unharmed. Alright then. Uh, in that case, I'm going to use my bonus action to turn my two sorcery points into a spell slot. Oh, okay. Didn't realize you had that yet, actually. Yep. Get that level two. Ah, nice. Okay. And yeah, that I'm ends your turn. There. Good stuff. Okay. So, um... Giant lizard's turn. This giant lizard, um, is yeah. It's glowering at you, Zach. Yeah, you basically just taunt every enemy. Every enemy just seems to have a vendetta against you because you just do grievous damage to it as soon as you start fighting it. So yeah, you brought up this on yourself. I'm afraid it's going to attack you with a bite once again. Twelve does not hit. Twelve does not hit. Um. It kind of just chomps at Finna. Mar Marlow's distraction is probably throwing it off balance a little bit. Okay, second giant like lizard is actually going to make an attack. Let me just check. That is the cracked one, I believe it is. Uh, yes, that one is going to make a an attack against Arthur, actually. Just because he's next to him. Okay, so... Make a bite attack. Does it? 18, I assume, uh, hits Arthur. It does, yes, sadly. That is unfortunate. And you take, ooh, nine piercing damage. Oof. Ow. Yeah, just a bit. Yikes. Okay, so it just goes to chomp at your shoulder and it leaves a little bit of a mark there. Oh, nine damage. Oh, phew. <laughs> okay. Oh, <laughs> be okay. cute in a second. And with that, that is the end of the giant lizard's turn. And now it is Gwen's turn. Since distance hasn't helped me, I'm going to move up here to this lizard. And I will use Jilila, my bonus, do that first, and then attack this nine. Remember, you have advantage this time, so you can roll twice. Yes. Great DM, tell us when we've got advantage Eve, in case we forget. I've not hidden it. <laughs> <laughs> well... Uh, yeah. By the way, what, what corrodes am I world? I don't see the roll, what is it? No. Oh, uh, it was uh, an, oh, a three and a one. <laughs> wow! Oh, what? So... Yeah. Oh, I'm so sorry. I, I'm genuinely not doing this on purpose of trying to help him. <laughs> no, it, it was, um, one of them was a net one, so uh, at least I, I have a 3 plus 5, so 8. So that's not going to hit. Okay, because you've got an advantage, I'll let you get away with the net one. So you'll take the higher of the two. So it seems. Well, yeah, advantage doesn't mean I get the net one. No, it, do no, it doesn't mean you get the net one. Sometimes some people will say that net one overrides everything but nah i'm gonna say that you'll take the high of the two definitely it would be a little bit unfair, unfair. it would be a what bit if, unfair. what if we got a nat 20 and a nat one yeah 
I'm, I'm going to just say you take the higher of the two, just to make <laughs> it fair. So it looks initially like it's going to bat away your quarter staff with its tail, but you manage to angle the staff just out of the way, but you still completely miss. And Marla looks a little bit disappointed that he couldn't help. This was his one job, and he, yeah, he hasn't done very well so far. Did I just come back to Gwen missing again? Yes, <laughs> on advantage of three and a one. Uh, I hurt. You're rivaling my reputation at this point for. Yeah, you really are, Pema. <laughs> okay, so. Honestly, I'd like to see how different it would be rolling real dice instead of rolling digitally. I have mm. considered doing that myself, <laughs> considering what it's been like for me. Yeah. But. Uh, yeah, okay. Uh, mid sarks turn. Can I tell how hurt this thing is? Um, I would probably uh, make a perception check, I suppose. It's a lizard. It's a lizard. Okay. I mean, it, it looks really okay, scaly, but other than that, you can't really discern anything else. And then I shall take another swing at it with my great axe. Okay, well, to hit. Uh, the left or the which bottom I... one? Oh, sorry, which one do you mean? Yeah. I... Left. I assume you mean this one. Yeah, 15. Uh, 15 hits, and uh, roll your damage, please. Oh, nice. Okay, so you strike. I mean, technically, thirteen because I've got a plus one. I guess it it really doesn't matter. Uh, so you just yeah. kind of like <laughs> take your great attacks. You strike into its belly and you just pull the axe up, just leaving a massive sort of mark up its torso. So I've got the lizard. Basically, I'm not going to describe that. In. That's come out. I'm not going to describe that in you any shoot, more detail, but... You just yes. used Klim Hazard, bud. <laughs> I did. Okay. <laughs> and uh, that lizard is definitely very dead. Uh, I'm just going to mark that. Oops, Daisy, and uh, boop. There you go. Uh, okay, uh, do you do anything else, Ark? Okay. I just, like, flick the blood off my lizard in the direction of the other one. It's, like, to annoy him. Oof. So I'm uh, interface. But... I'd, I'd say you can do that as needed yeah. interaction. Yeah. Yeah, I do that, then in my turn. The lizard now has its eyes at you. It doesn't appreciate it. <laughs> okay, and uh, with that, it's now Arthur's turn. I'm going to roll my shoulder where it bit me, uh, flexing it out, trying to ease up the joints. Then I'm going to swing in with my mace again. Go ahead. Uh, 16 will hit. That's 7 bludgeoning. Seven bludgeoning damage. Okay. So you swing in with the mace and you give it a good old conk in the jaw. It looks like you might have dislocated it slightly. Its face isn't quite as straight as it was before you applied your mace to it. So no more bite attacks? Um, <laughs> no, not quite. It's sort of like moving it to try and correct itself. It's, it's okay for now. It, its teeth are still very sharp. If it's just dislocated... Does it, it doesn't have the full range of motion to buy it. Make it so chomp itself down on you. So <laughs> it can't chomp up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's been chomping Damn down it. the whole time, so yeah, nice try. Damn it. <laughs> yeah, if you did a little bit more damage, I might have been tempted to let that slide, but nah. I'm afraid you don't know if you don't ask. Yeah, <laughs> so <laughs> Marlo just looking completely uh, deflated at this point that he's managed to somehow shoot two arrows in between the toes and failed to inspire Gwen in any meaningful way and got belittled by a small child. He has had enough. He is going to run in the middle of Zark and Arthur and he is going to stab at this uh, giant lizard with his... wait for it... Uh, Javon. He's going to do that. <laughs> so... so he trips. So it's just longbow attack. Oh, yeah. did that say longbow? Whoops. Yeah. Oh, I, I did. Oh. I definitely hit javelin. That's weird. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know what? I kind of wanted that first mold to be cannon, but 
that's not. <laughs> right, so Marlow imagines for a moment using a longbow at short range and just seeing the giant lizard chomp down on it, and then he just thinks, wait, I'm right next to it, I should just stab it, and he takes the javelin out and um, just uh, gives it a good old poke, and that will hit. And once again, uh, it's not rolling Marlow's damage, that's strange. Okay, I'm just gonna roll it manually. The boy hit there you go. every now and again. So, it's just going to like poke at its cheek and yeah. it actually causes its jaw to be align itself. <laughs> Marlow kind of wonders, I'm not sure how that happened, but okay, I mean, it's been a strange day so far. I still cheer the fact to hit it. <laughs> Marlow seems happier at yeah. least, and that's all that matters. Okay, it's now Delmet's turn. Okay. Um, I guess I'm going to try again with the Frostbite. I'll make the roll again. Keep rolling, 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 rolling. Oh, my apologies. For some reason, I was expecting a roll there. <laughs> oh, but no, that, no. Yeah, so, and then I just remembered, wait, yeah. that sounds familiar. Oh, right, I need to do something, though. I, <laughs> like, it's on me to oh. to drive the game forward. I imagine that as a DM. Uh, okay, so, yeah, unfortunately, oh. he beats it. God damn it. Once again, just slow icicles. It kind of waves its tail in your general direction just to mock you. And little frosty <laughs> shavings go at your feet. I swear. <laughs> okay. Do you do anything else? Uh, yes. I'm actually gonna. <laughs> after, gonna after, I'm after gonna remember stop. something quickly, and I'm gonna start to sprint back up this way. Uh, well, I won't dash because I'm not getting that bonus uh -huh. movement. And I'm done. All right. Very good. It is now the lizard's turn. So, um. The lizard is, uh, let's just think about this, I think it's going to make an attack against Marlow just because it it poked him in the cheek and, eh, it, it hasn't. The, the flesh of these two is getting a little bit stale. So he, I'm offended at that. So it is going to take a bite attack against him. Oh, which, which crits. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh... You can change it to me if you want. So it's, it's uh, two damage dice, isn't it? So, mm -hmm. so yeah, the second one is minus two, I think. When mm -hmm. you rolled, yeah, so that's going to be six and Eleven. five. Eleven, thank you very much. I literally came to that conclusion the exact same time. <laughs> okay, so... Uh, Still don't mind taking that hit for him. So... Uh, Marlo looks really proud for a moment, and then he just sees the shadow of this giant lizard with its wide, toothy smile descend on him, and he takes a good old bite out of his left forearm. And Marlo really is wincing in pain after that one. Okay, and now it is Gwen's turn. Same as before, let's see. <laughs> If for once it hits. Twenty-two. Oh, it it hits. It hits. We got one damage. <laughs> oh no. Nice. Nice. So. <laughs> Sort of with a grin on your face, you finally get a solid hit on this thing, and it, yeah, this doesn't tickle this time. It is writhing around in pain quite a lot, and you leave a really nasty burn on its stomach. It, it was a burn? weapon, it, physical weapon. Oh, was it a physical it weapon? Oh, right. Like, for, so, for some reason, I thought that was produced flame. I'm really sorry. Okay, you no, sort no, of no. you bonk it on the head, and it looks really, really confused. Its eyes are kind of spinning a bit. Which is a magical weapon, that. so it couldn't corrode, no matter what you decide. I'm not going to corrode your wooden weapon, don't worry. Doom. 
Ah. <laughs> but yeah, seriously, you really, uh, you really knocked it for a loop there. It's looking really rough. <laughs> okay, uh, do you do anything else, Gwen? Nope. Okay. Nothing I can do. No In that sense case, moving away yet. It is Axe's turn then. Mm. Okay, Grumble. Grumble. you swing in and mo mostly by virtue of the fact that Gwen is just giving it a concussion, it just swings its neck out of the way just in time to avoid you. Oh, well. You do anything else? I still shout angrily at it, it's like, ah, trying to get its attention from everyone else around me. Ah, uh, rage. Okay, and besides oh, I, I that... Can't. I can't rage. No, I know you can't rage, but you're saying the word rage, probably. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Okay, so I take it that's the end of your turn? Yeah. Okay, Arthur, it's your turn. Yes, again, I will immediately swing in with a mace. Swing. Solid hit. Seven bludgeoning. Okay. As its head sways back and forth from Gwen's previous attack, you swing into it as its head's moving in your direction, and it just falls over limp. Okay. Zark wanted that too. Assume it's dead. Mm -hmm. That it is. Still in turn order, or are we able to move freely? Um, the other two guards are unconscious over yes, here, that's so why I'm I asking. Um, I mean, there's no way to wake them up without. Hitting yeah. them, and I would say that combat. I that mean, combat's only like six seconds, so yeah, combat's over for all intents and purposes. Immediately move over to one of them. I want to run over to just make sure my spell's still in effect, because I don't know how long it's been. Um, bear in mind, around is only like six seconds, so I'd probably say maybe it's been just over half a minute, if that. I, I was con I was also considering the time we were before we rolled initiative, but I didn't know how long that had been. In real time. Um, it wasn't a minute either. When we're rolling initiative, yeah, I think from that point, your kind of time freezes while we're doing that particular part. Okay. I'll look over. I'll look over him. Not long before they wake up. You have rope. Easy to just, just restrain one of them. I'm going to ask Zark all this is going on to help me open the cages. I'm I'm gonna uh, hide help me kill moment. help me kill this one first. I'm and I'd say we both attack at the same time. Kill prisoner Specific specifically this one. one. Just one of them. Mm -hmm. You do what as, you as will. We both. Alright. Alright, in that case, I'll just swing down on this one, try and kill him. Okay. Oops. Ready to roll damage. Um, well, bearing in mind, when you're attacking someone who's unconscious, it's an auto crit. Mm hmm. So, what would your. So, I suppose so just roll damage, you can't avoid you. <laughs> I mean, just. Tricks. I mean, since it's a crate, you just roll an extra damage dice, so... Yep, that's six damage to him. Six damage. Okay, so you strike down at the guard, and he screams really loudly. Uh, can I use Mage Hand to cover his mouth? Um, do... Uh, let's probably do... I'd actually... Since he's waking up from sleep, would that be a dex off, do? To kind of cover his mouth in time? Um... I think it's supposed to be Dex. I mean, he is conscious by virtue of that, so he will be. He won't be able to move and get up. Oh, not move and get up, just to yeah, stop him from screaming. So, uh, Dex, yeah, he's got a plus one to that. So, um, uh, roll uh, Dex. Um, 19. Gentlemen. Okay. And uh, let me just double check what he's got. Um, yeah, plus one, so. Do, 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 do. And if you don't roll 19, that's fine. Oh! <laughs> oh, no! <laughs> so, you stride down on the guard and just goes, ah! Ah! You shouldn't have said anything. So, that scream was pretty loud. 
And yeah, roll a perception check to see if you notice if anything happens. Uh, who? Uh, Delaman. Oh, okay. Actually, either of you, because you're both next to each other. Oh, Delaman's already won it. So. I'll actually let you both roll. Mm. Okay. So, um, I would probably say, Arthur, hearing this, you hear footsteps in the distance. They were kind of trailing away, but you hear them stop. And then a few moments later, you hear them coming closer to you. From right, what direction? Uh, from this direction up here, the direction where those ambush drakes left earlier. Um, they're kind the of on, coming. They're on the map here, but um, I'm going to say that they are actually probably about uh, a couple of minutes away from you. So I want to immediately swing back down on this one again. I will actually attack two this time. Okay, go ahead. If nothing else, just if you want to say it's a help action, that's fine, or I can roll an attack. Okay, roll your attack. Uh, 13 does not hit. But our advantage given he's prone still? Um, yeah, I'll give you advantage for it. Also, he's pretty disorientated. Uh, meets it, beats it. Uh, five damage. Mm. Okay, I would actually say, to be honest, considering that this guy's next to the other one is now awake as well. He's not been woken up specifically, though. With magical sleep, does it have to be that they're attacked, or mm -hmm. would like a regular... I'm woken up by another creature. It's... Well, when oh, you say woken up by another creature, would that it's be by sound? It's an action to wake, wake it up. Yeah. It would right. take damage, or uses, someone else uses an action to... So it has to be specific. Okay, I'll give you the benefit yeah. of the doubt there, so he's still asleep. Uh, the one that you struck down on, um, he is screaming and then he just stops and just falls over. Quickly, help me tie this one. I quickly run around with rope and immediately start tying it up. Um, let me just... And then I kind of shout whisper, get the people out of here. Okay. Go in... east. Right, Why in the time that you guys are discussing on? it, Zach he's... and I were trying to open the cages oh. already. Okay. Yeah. I didn't want to interrupt before while, while you were doing combat, but we were trying to open okay. the cages. The footsteps are getting closer, just so you know. Is he tied up? Did we open the cages? <laughs> Oh, right, sorry, I thought you were asking me. Um, did you say that Zark was opening the cages? I said I asked Zark to help me with it, so probably since there... Uh, strength check with strength. advantage with, for Zark if he wants to open it, yeah. Does say 23 open it? Yes, it will. It, it, to be honest, it, you break right. the lock rather effortlessly. Bearing in mind there are another two carriages. I'll do the same for all of them. Well, yeah. Um, yeah, just uh, roll I'll it. Let... Just, just roll it again. I I'll let them times. talk to the people while I just bust the doors off. Or locks, whatever. 19. Okay, 19. Yeah, you get it. Another try. Two more. And just once more. God damn it. Six. Um, you damage it quite, quite a lot. Quite high on the. Uh, you don't quite break the lock of the third one, but I would just say that you could just try maybe ripping a door off. Yeah, I'll try that. Just have another strength. Yeah. And I'm trying to help, seeing that he's struggling. Go ahead. Try to help. Um, uh, roll it again because Gwen's helping you. <laughs> 13 yeah I'll say you break it 
footsteps oh. are getting very close now. Just so you're aware. They're approaching I the wanna... edge of the You city. never answered. Had we restrained them? Had you restrained the other guards? Yeah, sorry, I, I apologize. As I soon wanna... as he's tied up, I want to mo throw him over my shoulder and start to move towards them. I want to cast Minor Illusion to there, the range of 30 feet. To where, sorry, to here? Yeah, and I want to replicate I want to replicate that guy's scream from before to try and divert them away to a different direction. Uh, okay. Let me just check what the spell save DC is for each of these guys. Are these to? Um, you guys continue to do what you want to do whilst I just check this. So. Uh, do you tell me where you put on the minor illusion? I I I may have do I may have diverted them northeast. We crossed west. Avoid them. Agreed. Get them out now. I gesture towards the civilians and I start lugging the person over this way into the trees. Let's move quickly to the trees. I'm telling this to the, the, the people through the trees over there by the river. No, take. I say taking the person from you. Uh, apologies, I will move these guys in a moment, so just need yeah. to look this up first. Yeah, if he's out, does it give you the option he takes the person from you and carries him? I uh, make sure that he's gagged as you've done that. Hmm. You need me to post my illusion again so you can see? Um, so it's, so yeah, I'm basically rolling this nine times. <laughs> or, well, I'm, yeah, I'm just going to roll this as groups, so. Uh, I'm just going to be making some uh, dice rolls, so don't mind me for a minute. So, what so nice rolls? First one succeeds. Second one fails. Right. Okay, so. As the scream is heard, the the ambush drakes kind of scatter around. Sort of, some of them are continuing to go in this direction, but quite a few of them are going over to the source of the distraction. I'd say that that's brought you guys another couple of minutes or so, whilst they kind of figure out what's going on. Are we all together now? Marlo, people, come on. Uh, are we moving? Yeah, so the, Marlo's the with you, I've just not moved his token yet. Mm. If we move just a bit into the trees and then try We're to... We're to the other side. I'll be honest, I'd say we continue going. Yep. Right, so, yeah, I'd say that this confusion is going to give you enough time to get the people away. Yeah. Okay, do you guys... Uh, Stick around, or do you just book it out there as fast as possible? Yes. I say book it out. Move the civilians to the keep. Okay, very good. So, um, you guys, in that case, uh, I'm just going to put you back to the other. So, I'd probably just say for easiness sake, you guys manage to evade the patrol, and you go through... The, uh, the old tunnel again without any issues. Uh, the guards are expecting you because uh, you don't think do you do you blow the horn as you come back, Martha? For the old tunnel? No. For the old tunnel? Okay, just wanted to double check. Okay, so I would just say for uh, the convenience of time, you guys have now brought back into the keep. Um, I didn't specify this before, but you rescued roughly 20 people. So um, they are brought back. I'm not going to put them on the map. Um, so you bring them back uh, single file and um, Night Hill looks absolutely overjoyed. Um, some guards gather around them and check to see if any of them need medical attention. Some of them head uh, towards the inside, towards um, this corner. A few of them are guided gingerly towards the infirmary. Um, instantly, I might have missed it because I was a bit distracted. What did you do with the other guy? Did you just leave him there, or did you take him with you? Oh, we took him with us. Okay, in that and case... he's been gagged and bound the entire time. Good Garth stuff. carrying him. Yep. Okay, mm -hmm. so, um, after all this, um, Night Hill acknowledges you guys, um, 
and seeing um, the soldier gagged over Zack's shoulder, I assume? Yep. Okay, and he just goes, I must admit, I didn't really know what to expect when I sent you out there, but I can't be happier with this result. Where did, where did you find these people? Just a little to the south of here. Um, just on the other side of the river. Not far. Not far at all. Were they near the old mill? Uh, they were across the river from the old mill. They were going to be transported. It seems there was some kind of considered loot. Why would they want people? I, I wouldn't really want to know, frankly. You wouldn't want to know. If they're anything like the Korean. Oh, I, mean, I, I don't. Again, I don't know of who you speak, but. Can you mention a name? Uh, Lady uh, Kishnir. Does it mean anything? Um, Doom, I will say it was Resmir that you heard a well. Oh, Resmir, give... sorry. I'll give you the benefit of the doubt then. Resmir, okay. Night Hill thinks for a moment and something very vaguely stirred in, me in his memory. Resmir. That actually does sound a bit familiar. Can you tell me anything else about what you saw? I'll just pop the guy on the ground and then prop myself up against the wall over here. There were two lizards arguing. One big, one in a purple robe. Purple robes. <sighs> Night Hill has a look of recognition upon his face, as you mentioned purple robe and he just goes aware of purple well if my suspicions weren't confirmed before this is definitely the cult of the dragon we're dealing with I believe the one in purple is one of the not leaders but one of the bound commanders did, did they see you no, they didn't. They went off, and when they went off, we took care of the party that was guarding uh, these people. I gesture around. Can you describe the one in purple? In any more detail? Uh, hmm. Yeah, write down any detail, bugger. Let's roll intelligence. Yeah, roll intelligence, see what you remember. I already corrected you on the name, so... Uh, yeah, I mean, if Gwen's interjecting, I'll allow that to... Yeah, fair enough. Uh, some form of Lizard folk or dragonborn, I'm not sure. Yes, that that does sound color. familiar, actually. Yes, uh, that would make sense. It works as a distance, I'm sorry, I cannot talk closer. Did you get their name? Sadly, no. They did not mention names. They did not call each other by name. Another name mentioned, um, Neslorn, I think. Uh, roll intelligence to see whether that's correct. <laughs> um, <laughs> you say Neslon and Night Hill just goes, No, no, that that isn't it. I can't, I can't remember what. Was it Nes and Laura? Was that meant to be an A? I can't read my own writing. <laughs> sort of, like Night Hill goes to change the subject. We may be able to learn more from him, motioning to uh, the guard that he captured. Um, the guard is still asleep because no one has specifically woken them just yet. So, um, what do you guys uh, do now? More people in temple. Do you have anyone good for interrogating? Castilian knows a thing or two. He looks uh, rather chirpy, but he's he's seen his fair share of conflict. Leave him in his hands. I'm sure we'll be able to get something of value. So uh, Castilian moves over to the guard and he hoists him over his shoulder. Wow, impressive, actually, given his size. And he goes, oh, don't you worry, laddie. You'll be in safe hands with me. And he just carries him over here. And they go inside. Okay, and uh, with that, um, nothing else is really going on here 
right now. So what guy, what would you guys like to do next? I do want to point out, by the way, it is quarter to 11. Do you guys want to keep going or do you want to stop here? I keep going for a while. It's up to you. I'm still fine. It's still fine? Speaker's optional. Mm. Yeah, okay. If you if you guys are good to keep going. Um, long, yeah. long weekend. Very good. More, okay. More people in temple. You go there. I shout over. Um, I roll my shoulder. Might be worth seeing the medic again. See if she'll give us a little something to quicken our step before we leave. Uh, yes, unfortunately, Sasha is getting rather busy. I'll just pop my head in to see her. Quite, quite a few of the civilians needed treatment, so I'll be back in a few moments. Uh, Night Hill knocks <laughs> on the door of the makeshift infirmary and heads in, so... <laughs> Um, While he's doing that, I'd like to lick like, the wound at my arm. It's like, oh no, Zark, no taste good. Why things keep biting Zark? Um, so, uh, are you trying to determine how hurt you are, Zark? I know I'm very hurt. I'm just like trying to wonder why think people keep biting me. Okay, uh, do you guys say anything else to each other want to talk to her oh. before Night Hill gets back? Um... I'll actually like to look down to Delaman. I'll kneel down beside him. Next time when I see to stab, stab. I am no veteran of war like you. I do not have it in me to murder in cold blood. I know, but carrying two people is harder than carrying one. Okay. So I'll carry both. Yes, Ark, you're very strong. We're good. Lucky to have you. Oh. I'll, I'll look away a bit sheepish and start picking at some of the scales on my way. Implied, yes, yes, the little child. <laughs> Is it? Yeah, I got you, and he's. So Ark doesn't get this, though, but he still smiles happy with himself. Around this time, you hear some angry, vaguely Scottish screaming coming from the direction that Castilian took the guards. Do it. And it it doesn't faze me at all, I just kind of continue on. Yeah, um, you just hear a couple of the guards mention, ah, uh, Castilians, that's again, jeez. Uh, I know he's good at this, but could he not do it a little bit more quietly? So The night's already been long enough. Yeah, I hear that, James. But, uh, what can you do? Needs must, I suppose. I turn to Arthur and just say, Sounds like Castilian is having fun. I hope he tells us something good. Oh well. One way or the other, it's one less person to deal with. The guards just um, look out. He's like, yeah, he's going to be out of this for quite a while. You probably shouldn't expect him to be done anytime soon. <laughs> a good story is a good story, no matter when we hear it, isn't it? Yeah, he just... He, yeah, James, I, you think he drags this out a little bit too much? Yeah, Jack, he really does. Uh, I suppose we should just keep watching over the wall. It's not as if anything else has happened. They're just gathered outside, uh, not really doing anything. Ah, uh, jeez, I just want this night to be over. Ah, uh, you said it, brother. And the guards. I'd like to go over to the wall actually and have a little peek over the wall to see exactly what is gathered outside, how much there is now. Um, as you look outside, um, I would say there aren't really that many fires around the keep specifically, so it is a bit dark. So I want you to roll perception to see how much you can see. Does it have dark vision? Actually, I do, do up to sixty feet. Oh, okay, in that case. Um, yeah, I'd just say, in that case, I won't make you roll perception, in that case, if you've got dark vision. Okay, uh, you look over the wall, and you see a mixture of kobolds, ambush drakes, um, some guys in the headdresses, some giant lizards, but curiously, no Kareem. Hmm, that's odd. Put my head back down. Have you not tried scurrying them all away? Uh, who are you talking to, sorry? Just the guards that are next to me. Um, the guards, uh, upon you seeing that, um, just motions up to the sky, pointing at the dragon. And then they point towards uh, this general direction over here. 
And because it was a little bit further away, it didn't really draw your eye at first, but you could see a scorch mark on the ground. And he said, yeah, when we, when we started the, when the attack started, yeah, we tried to scare them off, but then that thing did that over there. If you inspect the scorch mark a little closer, you can see that it's left a fairly small crater. Uh, James here reckons it was a warning shot. And then uh, the Onis set in, and frankly, we haven't really tried to do much since we I don't know what it is about that thing I mean it's not really so bad now but Jesus we felt terrified James who's Jesus and why do you keep going on about him oh well <laughs> nothing a self help book it would probably help you quite a lot actually too help you with your marriage problems you don't really need to bring <laughs> that up right now this is hardly the time or place uh, anyway uh, sorry we tend to go off on tangents uh, the point being is, yeah, that thing is going to do some damage. I think, yeah, if as I recall, um, uh, Keith, uh, what was it, Keith, son of Keith, something ridiculous like that? Jeez, I don't know. Yeah, his farm got burned pretty bad. He was stood near the side of the wall. It grazed his farm a little bit. <laughs> I've sort of wandered over to overhear this conversation. You should be thankful that that's all it did. A dragon of that size could bring this keep down in seconds. I wonder why it hasn't. Uh, your guess is... Uh, actually, if you're talking... Sorry. It's a blue dragon, right? It is a blue dragon, yes. Do you As have anything to tell us, Chad? Uh, I'm going to also walk over to... I'm going to ask them if the blue dragons aren't they no for water? Oh, no, 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 no. No, they typically, their breath weapon is that of lightning. Yeah. If it makes contact with your skin, it hurts as much as fire. Keith can attest to that. Uh, I think he's still probably resting in the infirmary, actually. Death can be instantaneous. You look over you to survive. the... If you wish you were dead. Honestly, he got very lucky. Literally, just one of the sparks grazed him, but, jeez, the way he was hollowing it sounded... Uh, it sounded like his 18th birthday party all over again. Oh, you don't have to remind me how that went, so that... Okay, okay, sorry, we're professionals. We really shouldn't be talking about this. This probably is completely wrong time to do. Now Hill is kind of listening to the conversation at this point, after coming out of the infirmary, and he kind of he kind of knows these two, and he just shouts up to him, you two, for God's sake, knock it off! Uh, the two guards straighten at Night Hill's uh, attempt to reprimand them, and they just uh, both look at each other and then look back to you. Uh, look, if it's all the same to you, I think we probably should just stop talking. Night Hill's a nice guy most of the time, but when... I wish you would, and walk off. He doesn't finish his sentence, he just stops. And they just shrug their shoulders. You would think the bigger people would have bigger brains. Uh, who is this directed to, Sai? Myself. Fair enough. Okay, um, so Night Kill has come out of the infirmary, and um, like before, he has um, a few minor healing potions. Again, I would say just for the sake of convenience, it's enough to heal you guys to full. But he warns you, we don't really have much more of these, and Sasha wants to keep the other remedies for the wounded. Thank we you. May we appreciate this all the same. We may be able to do this once more, but after that, you're going to have to be very, very cautious. That okay. is not always our choice. Nighthill gives you a knowing nod. I mean, like, if you remember, he is injured himself. So, mm -hmm. yeah, he understands where you're coming from completely. 
Okay, and uh, with that, you guys have healed for you haven't had a rest, so spell slots are still not refreshed. Basically, that's where you were at the start of the session. Okay, and uh, with that, so what do you guys do now? Do we go for the temple? Um, one question before that. We're still, though we haven't slept, but it hasn't been that much time that has passed that we are exhausted, right? No. No. No, no, no other ill effects, just no. no recovery. No, like, you're not going to be taking levels in exhaustion. Like, everything that's happened so far, I would say that about two hours in real time have passed. So you got to Green Est around about 9 o'clock. I would say that it's about 11 now. But in terms of, like, gameplay mechanics, you guys are as, as, as fit as you were as when we started. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, anything else before you guys move on? I'm going to pull out the map mm -hmm. and look over it and... Uh, basically judge a route to go that would uh, most likely have the least resistance to make our way to the temple. Uh, Night Hill will saddle up alongside you as you're doing that, and he will motion to the river that you were guys at right before, and he says, it doesn't really give you very much cover. There are sections which are exposed, but these bushes will obscure the sight of mostly anything that will be looking towards you. When I was in the infirmary, the civilians mentioned that they seem to be sticking mostly to the town. That's good news, at least, then. Alright. Bushes it is. Um, also, while the map is out, maybe show him exactly the location where we found. Alright. Okay. I'll let you do that. Okay, then, in that case, since the map is out, I'm going to point at the location where we found the civilians before. So, yeah, you point at the location where you found the civilians. Uh, Night Hill doesn't really respond to this in any particular way, other than just expressing confusion once again as to why they were taking civilians. However, he does add, they were quite close to just being able to get out of town. Had they continued down the route that you were describing, they probably would have gotten out of Greenness without any of us ever really knowing about it. You did a fine job. Those people owe you their lives. And he looks over to Arthur. It's... I wouldn't have liked to have thought what they would have done to them otherwise. As frowned slightly, kind of remembering things. And... Just nod. Then stand up. Are we going? I believe so. Yes. 